It is 8 o'clock. It is Tuesday night. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's another DJ roundtable. And yes, we have some great DJs here, including a new DJ to the DJ roundtable, uh, Chris Disc. Uh, he is from basically north of New York, but not all the way up north like Buffalo or northern uh, New York. That's like he's like almost Canadian. Uh, but he has a little bit of a New York City accent. Just a little bit. He's far enough away, but he's close enough to have that little bit of an accent. I love him. I've had him here in Chicago. Uh, had plenty of time, uh, pleasant time with him. He spent some time here in Chicago and we went to dinner and uh, showed him around a few things in uh, my neck of the woods. And just a great overall guy to hang out with and look forward to hang out with him again. As always, I have Hunter here. DJ Cool Thing, and I have Dwayne Dixon, the hitman from Ohio. As always, we have you here, and I want to thank you for watching. Uh, we have a couple of our DJs should be here shortly. Again, some people are running late for sports. Uh, a couple of DJs can't be here tonight because they have things going on. We're working DJs, like I always say. Gigs, parties, family stuff, those are more important. But what we are here, we are important to share information with you. And if you could do me a favor, if you're here on Twitch watching, make sure you say something down in the comment section. It'd be greatly appreciated. Say, hi, how are you? If you hear something, say something, you know, as far as, you know, ask questions. We want to do stuff that you want to talk about. You want to say something, give a comment, please do so. I love the comments. And thank you for commenting and saying things. If you're watching on YouTube, do me a favor. First thing first, hit the like button. It helps me slay that algorithm that youtube beast that keeps beating us down every week to make sure more djs see the show but also like button thumbs up subscribe make sure you're not subscribed please subscribe to the channel the third thing is make sure that you come along and check the bell icon and one more step just one little small step share the video take the video share it on social media share it on instagram on facebook share it to other djs Tell other DJs about the show to help grow the show and have more and more people on here and watching the show, which actually helps. So we have more questions and we give you more answers and we have more great people on here. One programming note uh, I hope to have back on here shortly is the sound couple, which they were on here before. Great, great people. Um, I've been talking to uh, the two of them, and they're trying to align their schedules to see when they can do it. But hopefully they'll be back on here again soon. Uh, so look forward to that. The other thing also is make sure that you always, always, always leave a comment, subscribe, like, so forth. Everything that we do, we try to do our best. But talk about our best and talk about what we do. Most of us here either do DJ, uh, DJ either weddings, special events, or even a club or two, like uh, DJ Brentley. Unfortunately, he's not going to be here this evening. So I have a question for you, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit what I do. How do you prepare and get yourself ready for a event? And what I mean by that, when you go to an event, be it a wedding, school dance, whatever it is, you bring some stuff with you to prepare yourself for that night. And I'm not talking about gear-wise. I'm not talking about speakers or controller or what kind of laptop you have. I'm talking about stuff like, do you bring a bottle of water? Do you bring breath mints? Do you bring a snack of some kind? Sounds kind of funny, but here, I'm going to give you this scenario here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Tracy and I have what we call a jump bag. It, it, I bought it off of Amazon. It is a first aid bag. I do have a first aid kit on there. I do have some first aid stuff on the bag, you know, band-aids, a rescue breather, other stuff that I know to use and how to use it. Uh, I was CPR certified a long time ago. Had been recertified in a long time. I should take a class again just to brush up, make sure I'm still good. Um, but the thing is, that it's basic first aid stuff. I also have some stuff in there, like, you know, stuff for that time of the month, for, for ladies, like, you know, bridesmaids. Um, I have stuff in there for uh, super glue. I have Tide pens. I have safety pins. 
I have bobby pins because again, things break, hair comes down, you know, a button may pop off. I have a sewing kit. So last year, a year before last, Tracy would hear, she probably she might overhear it and might come in here and chime in for a second. We had a groom come up to us, go, Hey, I got a question for you. I know you guys have a lot of stuff in your in your raw uh, bag. Do you happen to have any snacks? And Tracy looked at him for a second and said, yes, we do. And the reason why is that because we bring snacks for ourselves. We bring protein bars. Because, again, I'm, and you're sitting there for all those hours. Sometimes, you know, you're, a lot of times we don't eat there. Or you're there for hours setting up and you're hungry. You're, you want something to eat. So what do you have? Have a protein bar. She's like, yes, I have a couple protein bars. What one do you like to have? So the, the, the groomsman got a couple protein bars and some snacks that Tracy shared with him because we bring snacks for ourselves. We have our own uh, bottles um, that are insulated bottles. We got them off Amazon. Uh, I think they're, I want to say they're 40 ounces. Tracy will fumble ice and water. Uh, there's a product called Liquid IV. It's They're coming packets. It's a salt and sugar with a little lemon flavor, I put one of those packets in there and flavor the water. That's so we are prepared for our event. So that way, when we get there, after we set up, we have some water to drink. We have some other stuff to, to eat. You know, that way we're not relying upon bugging the facility. Hey, can I have this? Can I have that? You know, getting a glass of water, or as we say in Chicago, a glass of pop for soft drinks uh, or something like that from the facility not a problem, but when the bar is not open, you're thirsty, I, I, you know, you want to be prepared. You want to take care of yourself. So, again, some of the things that we bring is our own water, our own re, uh, reusable bottles. We bring some snacks. So we bring, like, you know, protein bars. But we also have all the other stuff in the bag, including breath mints, including uh, aspartanol, Advil. You know, so that way if we have, you know, an ache or pain, we can kind of take care of it. So I want to ask Hunter, when he goes to a wedding, a party, an event, what are the things that you bring with you to take care of yourself? Well, the Sunday I DJ that outdoor wedding, I uh, brought me a little cooler with water and like Gatorade or Powerade, like a sports drink to drink while I'm there and I brought a fan to keep myself cool during the uh because it was hot and humid and I brought me some paper towels to wipe my face off so I do sweat all it does get very hot and humid here in South Carolina so I just wipe my face down whenever I'm setting up because the sun is like constantly being down me so yeah I bring that And one of the things that we also bring, uh, actually for me more than Tracy, because uh, being a fat guy, I'm a fat guy sweat, so I do have a towel that I will have with me so I can wipe off my face and stuff like that. So, oh, Chris has got a towel. Uh, <laughs> bringing a towel with is always great, and it's it's reusable because you can throw it in the wash after you're done and wash it. And one of the things that uh, my my lovely wife always likes to use is. Um, Lysol uh, sanitizer for the uh, laundry. It has a nice scent to it. It kills any bacteria, which the soap should kill the bacteria in there, but it's an additional layer. Plus, also makes stuff smell nice. So, like my t-shirts, my dress shirts, she cleans everything with it. And again, it's it 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 smells great. The one thing we don't use, and this is a little trick here, we used started a few years ago is we don't use a uh, fabric softener in the washer because it actually hurts your washer. And we don't use fabric softener dryer. We have uh, the uh, wood ball, uh, wood balls, wool balls. So they look like baseballs. They're made of 100% pure, pure wool and they're woven and you throw them in the dryer. I think we have like, I want to say four or six of them Tracy throws in and she throws them with every load and dries her clothes with it. The funny thing is that uh, was it last week, week before last, uh, in a pair of my, I want to say pants or shorts, one of the balls was in the pocket. So she didn't know how it got in there, but uh, it was in the pocket. She's like, what, what's going on here? And in the pocket, there's a there's one of the, the wool balls. Uh, so, Mr. Dixon. You somewhere where you're not supposed to work, you buddy. Uh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Mr. Dixon, how do you prepare yourself for that? What do you bring? Um, 
Gatorade and um, Rice Krispie treats and candy. And then if it's a wedding, I usually make sure I try to have the script. So if, while I'm driving, I'm going through the script in my head. Um, oh, and my tool um, pack. Because every time you look up, I either need scissors or a hexagon um, doohickey or a screwdriver or some, something like that. So, so those are the main things. Really quick question here. Uh, I know there's only four of us. How many people here actually have a small toolkit? And I have I have a couple. Small toolkit they bring with them to a, a gig. Chris? Okay, so three of us. So it, it's one of the things that I bring in. Uh, I have in and actually just used it this past weekend on my facade. Um, I have uh, a um, Torx... Um, it's from Home Depot. It's a multi-Torx uh, bit, uh, basically Allen wrench key, uh, set, and I have it on Torx and Allen wrench set. And I actually had to tighten a bolt on one of my, on my facade. Um, I have a full toolkit with has, from guy from Home Depot. No, not Home Depot from uh, Lowe's. It's from, it's a Craftsman. It has a hammer in it. It has a ruler in it. Uh, tape measure. Uh, it has a, a small socket set. It has a couple of screwdrivers in it. I think it was like 30 bucks, 20, $29.99, one of those specials in a plastic case. It and we open it up, yeah, the pieces do fall out. It is it's cheap, you know, $30 kit. It's not a really expensive kit, but we keep that on the van all the times. And a couple of years ago, we actually had a groom come to us and ask, and we know you guys have everything. Do you guys happen to have a hammer? Trace is like, we do. She ran down really quick. And she grabbed the hammer, brought the hammer back, said, here you go. And he was putting together the altar for the ceremony with his father-in-law and his father. And they had a couple bolts they couldn't get through. So they had to knock him through a little bit with a hammer. And then at, afterwards, he brings that back and says, thank you so much. You saved the ceremony. So, uh, again, it's, and having that toolkit uh, like you do have, Mr. Dixon, is a great thing to have because – you never know what you need. Is there is there any other tricks that you have? Any other tricks you can share that you bring that people don't think about? Um, ever since the pandemic, I always bring like um extra wipes. Um, let me see what else. Uh, oh, extra always bring extra um multi outlets things to you know the ones with the six the six um outlets in it or extra USB cords or iPhone cords and that little stuff. Um, and that's about it. I need to bring, I need to get a new computer so I can always have a backup computer. That's the only thing I haven't done since my original one broke and I had to return my school computer. Ah, but. there you go. <laughs> but, you know, having that stuff, you know, one of the things that we bring we bring a lot of stuff, and that's that's why I have, have you ever seen my pictures? A lot of times I have a uh, – it's a tool cart. In that tool cart, it has a handle, has wheels. In that tool cart, we have so much stuff, and it's not even funny. A lot of different adapters and cables and stuff. But, like, in the bottom I have, like, in the hard case, I have my headphones. But I also have uh, alcohol wipes. They're 70% alcohol. And that's why I wipe down microphones with. Uh, and the reason why I wipe down microphones – it's yeah okay stop viruses from transmitting, but also the fingerprints are off of it too. I'm clean. The, I'm make sure the microphone is nice and clean, because it's your investment, it's your equipment. You want to make sure that stuff is ni nice and look good looking. We hand it to someone, not all mugged up because the person before them, they had you know eaten hors d'oeuvres and all of a sudden they grabbed the microphone to make a speech mm -hmm. and they got you know whatever on it. So we always constantly clean microphones. Uh, microfoam. I never clean microphones. Never. You well, you you should microfoam, which this right here you can find um, on Amazon. This right here, uh, great stuff to have. This is a deodorizer and sterilizer. Uh, you put this on the microphone uh, before you put it away. Next time you grab it, it smells like uh, cherries, and it's clean and deodorized, and it is sterilized. So it will kill viruses. Uh, great product, guys down in Florida. Um, it looks like it looks like foam. You put it in your hand, you rub it in there. 
Uh, hand sanitizer, another thing we have, we have plenty of, because of the fact that we're touching stuff. And then we go touch electronics. What do you not want electronics? Grease, fingerprints, grease from your fingers. It sounds funny, but I much rather have my hands clean from not just viruses, but also from oils before I grab electronics. That way also your equipment doesn't look like it's got fingerprints over everything. Um, <laughs> duster. Uh, I have uh, a, a couple of Swifters to dust things. So, Chris, I know you have a lot of stuff up your uh, sleeve. What do you uh, What do you bring? I bring a little bit of everything for every type of category you can imagine. Between okay. Electrical, like you have simple tools for mechanical prop purposes. And honestly, people forget first aid, band-aids, antiseptics. You know, you remember the alcohol, but with all that, you have some bigger injuries sometimes. Why not even bring, you know, gauzes and stuff? But most importantly nowadays, especially in certain areas, Narcan? I can't see that. Narcan. Yes. Yeah, you just disappeared. <laughs> yes, I know. I disappeared. So Narcan and even uh, CPR masks. Yeah, that rescue breather, I have a rescue breather. And that that's an important thing. Narcan, um that's that's a that's a drug, even though people can get get it out. Um I would I don't want to push a narcotic or not a narcotic, a drug. Because that's a, that's designed for someone to contradict uh, narcotics. Right. Um, Many states have that free out there. It's over the counter nowadays. Mm -hmm. Many states are not there yet. New York and California are one of the top that to get this to do this. Uh, I know here in Illinois they 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 do that stuff. Um, but again, I I, I kind of I'm not a paramedic. I don't play one on TV, and mm -hmm. I don't want to people to think of that you know I'm trying to do something I'm not. So I would rather not do it, and it may sound bad, than open a liability. It might be a low li might have open some liability. It's one of the things you have to do what's best you feel is best for your business. And again, if you're trained in it, you know it's not hard to do no. that to rescue someone. It, actually, if you take a CPR class, a lot of CPR classes will train you on administering stuff like that. Uh, talk to your local uh, fire department. Talk to your local police department. Give a phone call, talk to usually a community relationship officer on the police department or sheriff's department or state police, wherever you're at, and talk to them. See what your state, your county, your municipality allows you to do. And if you want to get additional training, there's always classes from the Red Cross to local fire departments to local police departments um, and sheriff's departments out there. What They want to make sure that you're prepared if an emergency happens, what to do. And some businesses require their employees to get CPR certified. Uh, and that's that's one of the things that if your employer is asking you to be CPR cert certified, that's a great thing. Because, again, if you can help someone and save a life, that's great. We don't want anything bad happen at a wedding. But, unfortunately, things do happen. And being prepared for that, I, I feel it's a huge, huge thing. Um, I'm going to go back to Dwayne. Dwayne, because you're a retired teacher, did the, the school district require you to get, like, CPR training or anything like that? Um, no, not exactly, but I was a drill team coach. So all the coaches had to um, get certified and have a, like, I think it's a five-year license with um, CPR and first aid. And AED? Yeah. And then we had that. Everybody learned how to do that. Those are those are so easy to do. You know, if you mm -hmm. get the dummy there, you just know where to put the pads at. And even on the... The AED device it actually shows you where to put the pads on the body, mm -hmm. and you put the pad, you just follow the directions. It walks you through everything. Uh, it's not like you know again what the paramedics use the regular paddles. Those have to be done by someone certified. Uh, that's what paramedics and EMTs that uh, work hard every day saving lives. That's what they use. The AEDs are designed for people, county people who are not fully trained in medical or even medically trained people. It makes takes a lot of uh, guessing out of it, and it helps people out. Uh, hopefully, you'll never have to use one, but if you ever do, it's very easy and simple. Uh, choking, someone choking, um, doing an abdominal thrust to uh, you know removing a blockage. We, we have people having dinner. When someone started choking at the dinner, what do you do? Well, again, you you're not you don't want to be you know pretend you're a hero, but if you are trained to do that. 
which, you know, again, when you get CPR trained, that's one of the things they teach you is, you know, someone having a, you know, it's choking what to do. You walk through everything. And the big thing is that make sure you, you know, first thing to do is someone needs to call 911. Someone has to be, you know, told to call 911. And generally, uh, that's one of the things when you get trained with CPR and first aid is you want advanced care as soon as possible. And advanced care would be an ambulance and paramedics or EMTs who are trained and licensed in the area. Um, and they are the ones who have the advanced uh, services. You're doing there, you're doing basic, but you have to get advanced. That means you have to delegate someone to, hey, you point someone, hey, Hunter, you call 911. Or, hey, Dwayne, you call 911. I'm going to start doing CPR on this person. You, you know, And then you go through your processes of assessing. Um, I'm going to go through here some of the things down below, which <laughs> Kevin always... <laughs> Kevin always has some great stuff. Um, alcohol? Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Kevin, yep, yep, alcohol, yeah. Alcohol is alcohol wipes, yes, but alcohol drink, no. No one wants uh, no one wants a drunk DJ. Um, uh, Adrian, hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome. Welcome back again, sir. Uh, Kevin says, buddy has stock in it. I guess so. Uh, Hitman says, uh, hey, uh, Hey, Kevin and Adrian E. And uh, Adrian says, I usually bring a uh, Leatherman tool. Good thing to have. Multi-tool is always nice to have because you're easy, compact, and you have, Chris probably has one. Yep, yep, Army Switch, what's Army Knife? Yep. All right, just put it in the uh, room. Uh-oh, everybody's looking. Everybody's looking. <laughs> a multi-tool is a great thing to have, especially... Needle nose pliers. I cannot tell you how many times I've used needle nose pliers because a small bolt or a screw or a nut gets loose on something. And it's not, I, I, again, I'm a big guy. I got big fingers. It's not the easiest thing to grab hold of those little nuts sometimes. And having a nice uh, multi tool that has needle nose pliers to grab hold of it and hold it is really, really nice. Um, that is very smart to do. And Hunter. He's bringing out his uh, Swiss Army knife. <laughs> and, you know, a knife is a nice thing to have, just be able to cut uh, stuff. Like we have, um, I, I have the uh, razor blade knives uh, that, that uh, detract and retract. Um, so you can pull it out and, uh, and then uh, retract it back into itself so you can cut things. Uh, I also have scissors, of course, but it's it's nice having some stuff like that. Um, but also you want to talk to, especially going into a school or other areas that have requirements, ask them, say, hey, I have this stuff. Can I bring this in? You're not giving it to other people to use. It's for your, it's for you to use on stuff that you run into. You know, you may have to cut, you know, a piece of cardboard for something or a piece of fabric because you know of your of your settings or your stage or your booth or whatever and something broke you need to you know get around whatever so you may have to have to have that but also you want to make sure that if you're going into an area that is secured like a school that they know you have it you're, you know again you're not allowing you know people not you know people who are not supposed to have it have it you're using it yourself but you want to make sure they understand that you have something like that cuz they say no leaving your vehicle okay then you have to figure out a workaround. Um, Chris, I, I, I didn't get a chance to uh, beforehand because I went into the question real quickly, but I want you to uh, give everyone a, a five-minute um, basically synopsis of what you do and how you do things. And what is the crazy contraption you have above your head? And I, I know the answer, and yeah. I also know uh, the crazy place you're going to uh, soon. So if you want to explain to everyone about that. Sure. Why not? I do mobile DJ for about since 1998. Uh, again, buddy said I'm from upstate New York, a real upstate Northwest Chester. And I've been doing it since again, 98, uh, doing a lot of weddings, bar and bat mitzvahs, not so much. Sweet 16, certainly uh, lately been doing a lot of MC work with a lot of other DJ companies. So go in, do the MC work, get out. Now this adventure this is actually a foam machine, right? Right on top of our trussing that I got. And uh, it's a pretty good event. It uh, pumps out about 
800 gallons of foam, you know, on and off in about four hours. All right, that's a lot of foam. That's how much water consumed. So foam-wise, it's probably uh, six to ten times that amount. So went through a lot of fun stuff. Great for the kids, adults, teens. I could also do night parties. It can also <laughs> add fragrance and, of course, coloring. UV glow, green, red, blue, orange, whatever color is desired for the event. I make sure I have everything. As you see the safety cones here, I have a spray nozzle right there. Right now, I moved in the back before. Because uh, I said that's not a good position for that, and we keep uh, evolving. And I recorded that whole entire session, so it's it's a it's a fun time. You know, this was a for a community event near me, and they do it uh, annually every year. I've been doing it for about three four years now. And one of the things is that uh, you have a, a special uh, place you're going to. Uh, you want to explain to people where you're uh, traveling to uh, in a few months? Oh, in January, yes. Uh, the company where I that supplies me with the foam solution and foam gel that we use to cut down for into what the water, uh, they have their expo or their conferences, and that is uh, going to be in Tempe, Arizona this year in January, and this is their family reunion. Very uh, VIP oriented this year. They're only allowing a certain number of uh, vendors to buy tickets, and I'm lucky this year I was able to get one. <laughs> so I'll be heading to that in January. So Tempe, Arizona. So that right there in January, that 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 could be pretty nice, especially from uh, you know, again, a little bit I, I can't say upstate New York because you're like more like mid state. Cause you're not New York, you're not the southern part. 90 you're not... miles north of New York City, 90 miles south of Albany. So that's upstate, however you want to classify it. Albany's the capital region, but we classify anything straight north of Albany is the Adirondacks, and then we I say, you know, we have that nice central belt. Of New York, that's that's mid state, you know, and then you got the West, you know, that's the way I would classify New York personally, born and bred here in New York. So <laughs> there you go. And again, like for Chris, I, I had a fun time when Chris was here for uh, Marquee. We, uh, I took him to uh, one of the old school pizza places that uh, I go to. And I hope you enjoyed yourself at that night. We were out it doing was, a. It was good. Yeah. Except you guys have a competition for Detroit style pizza. You know, oh, no, no, no. That's not to try stuff. It's a place, it's a place near me now in, in Poughkeepsie. They're number two in the country for Detroit style pizza. Detroit, Detroit style is Detroit style. Deep dish. Now, deep dish is deep dish. That's tourist pizza. Okay. That's what they, that's what, I didn't take you for tourist pizza. I took you for your thin crust. I took you for thin uh, crust. <laughs> thin crust. Thin crust, is thin crust. Anyone who is, anyone who's a Chicagoan, they know right off the bat. You're you want deep dish? And I'm getting my wife Tracy loves her Giordano's, um, and Lou Malnati. She likes her deep dish, uh, but primarily most Chicagoans eat thin crust pizza. So that's that's uh, that's one of the big things here. And I took Chris to one of the best pizza places, Q's Pizza in Hillside, Illinois. If you guys ever want pizza place to go, to, that's one of the great places. I know Adrian has some places down in the south suburbs. Um, you know. Um, they're really great, including oh god, um, uh, I can I can't remember it now on the south side of the city. Uh, oh, I can't think of it right now. It's Nick and something. Um, they're famous. They've been on like bar stool and all the other stuff for pizza, and I can't think of the name. It's two names, and one is Nick. Um, but it, it's one of the things that uh, again, food is always great, but uh, being prepared for things is always good too. Now, one of the things when you do the uh, do the foam and stuff like that. Uh, how many events do you do a year that uses foam? Right now, it's been very little. I don't advertise it much. It's all been word of mouth through community stuff and other fellow DJs that know I have this foam machine um, that does this mass number. Uh, so we've uh, streamlined it down. I used to be bringing big buckets, and now I just have to bring hoses, a siphon pump, and, uh, you know, and... Uh, injection system so i'm keep my uh my setup nice and quick now so now hopefully the this next year in, in the next season because right now it's too cold here in new york we literally uh new york got their first snowfall stuff in the other areas and last night it got we got our first frost where i am so i'm done doing for the season so nick and vito's that's the one that, that's real good pizza 
Yeah, Nick and Vito's. That, that right there is uh, another old school pizza place. That's Southside. That'd be equal to Q's where I took you to the Western Burbs. Uh, Beggar's Pizza. Beggar's Pizza is decent. Uh, I'm not a big heavy cheese person, so I think they put too much cheese. And Aurelio's, ah, I'm sorry, not not good, not not good pizza. I would not I would not take anyone there to Aurelio's for pizza. That that would be like, yeah, no. Glad you didn't take me then. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I took you to places I go to for pizza, and I would take anyone anyone to places certain places. And uh, one of these nights, I still I still talk to Tracy. I'm like, I got we got to go to dinner with Adrian and his wonderful wife uh, one of these nights because Adrian's just in the southern suburbs. And him and I talk about White Sox stuff all the time. So we're both White Sox fans. So, buddy, but, I just learned something new about you. I know what you bring to every gig. What pizza? <laughs> I might. No, that no, no. There's one person, one DJ, one DJ who she is the pizza queen. Yeah, she's near me. She's yeah, just she's on the other side of the state near me. Connecticut, yes. right? Yeah, DJ Rachel. DJ yes, Rachel. She is. She is <laughs> awesome. She is a I great DJ. I, the woman is just, she's just, she's fantastic and she loves pizza. And that's one of the things that I know that, you know, when, if she comes here, that's one of the things I always try and tell her places to go because she treater. is from the pizza capital, but I think Chicago has some good pizza. Uh, Chris, that, the uh, that device that sits on top of the truss, how heavy is that? It's about 30 pounds, 40 pounds max. Uh, okay. Not very heavy. It's just basically a big whirl uh, thin uh, fan in the back with um, four spray nozzles that you would use for your garden stuff. Um, and it injects the uh, foam in there. And if, yep. Okay. And on the outside, the gray sheathing there is um, the material you would use kind of like um, for your uh, vent on your hood, the mesh. Okay. Is kind of what that stuff re re reminds me of. So it's a big, big five pieces with that. So that thing is actually supposed to be aimed downward, not sideways. And uh, we tried something different, and this worked very well for the uh, uh, the family community event that we did this for, their, their carnival event. Uh, we had 450 families show up in a four-hour span, and we had another DJ in the back, a uh, good friend of mine, DJ H-Bomb, Holby, very old school, another DJ be DJing. Uh, since he was in, in college, he's in their mid-90s. So he was DJing. I was providing the foam for the event. And now, it was did his you referral to the client that got me this gig. Did you uh, bring anything extra on your little trick bag for uh, this event? Other, I, I don't know, there's stuff, special stuff you need for the foam system. But did you bring anything else extra um, that you normally don't normally carry with you for the foam? Not really. Um, it was only a four-hour event. Um, the, my assistant who helps me set this stuff up, he literally lives not even three miles down the road. So he's got other stuff that I might need. And there you go. And plus, Walmart at this location where this uh, park was is literally a quarter mile down the road. So if we ever needed something, we're right there. Okay, cool. Cool. So. That is that is awesome, and that's maybe if you guys out there are DJing, uh, t down in the chat, tell me would you would you ever think about doing foam? And Chris is having success with that. I was talking to him uh, the other day about it, and Chris and I talk quite a bit. <laughs> and it, it's it's one of the things that um, it is always interesting where how different people do different things, and it's one of the things that you know foam at a wedding. I'd probably say not, but Chris does do other events, including, you know, parties and stuff like that. And, you know, outdoor party like that, especially in the summertime, foam could be cool. Uh, Mr. Dixon, were you ever thought of uh, adding foam to uh, your service? Uh, no, but one time I had thought about doing a bubble machine, but then somebody had pointed out the fact that that wouldn't work too good inside a gym. No, so, no uh, certainly not. Yeah, because yeah, so, I wasn't it, thinking about it at the time. It might, I would like to add a nice add-on for people. Sorry to cut you off, Dwayne, yeah. but for the foam, uh, if we're doing all weddings, you can get your, your clients within less than a year. You know, they're having their marriage, and uh, guess what's going to be bouncing on their way is a child. So we could do baby reveal parties. Mm -hmm. Pink foam, blue foam. You want to do general neutral, we can do orange or yellow, 
or green, and there's your general neutral colors that you could do foam reveal parties for baby mm -hmm. reveal. That would be cool. That that's a unique yeah. way of doing a uh, gender reveal of uh, blue for ba boy and pink for girl, and go from there. Um, one yeah. other thing, also um, with uh, bubbles um, turning the gym into a big slip and slide, that would not be fun. Try to take a gear out too, because that would be, <laughs> yeah, that would not be good. Hunter, what about you? Would you uh, would you want to do uh, a phone party? Would you like to do nope. that? Nope, I've never really thought about it. No, nope. Not at all. Would you consider it now? Nope. No. Nope. Nope. Never. No nah, problem. Never, really, Jeff, never in a million years. No problem. Jeff, I know you came in a late part of the uh, conversation here. Uh, Chris here is uh, here in a, as a guest on the show, and we were talking earlier on how we prepare for uh, events. You know, what do we carry with us? And what do you mean about how we prepare? Like, do you bring your own water? Do you bring your own snacks? You bring a tool set. Do we, what are some of the tricks that you carry with you um, to an event? So I'm going to start you off with that. Um, what are the things you bring? Do you bring yourself a bottle of water? Do you bring yourself, you know, a bag of potato chips? What, what, what do you bring for yourself to handle yourself for an event? Uh, definitely bring something to drink, um, you know, whether it be water or, um, you know, just load up the old um, thermos here. Uh Usually bring a protein bar in case I don't get dinner. Um, you know, like this past Saturday, the event, um, they fed uh, all the administration um, Chick-fil-A. They forgot about me. So halfway through the night, they bring me, oh, we forgot. We have a, a Chick-fil-A sandwich for you. <laughs> it was cold, but you know what? I ate the heck out of that thing <laughs> You know, at 10 o'clock at night. It was really good. Um, I, I like to bring breath mints, uh, some kind of spearmint breath mint, because not only does it make your breath um, you know, fresh, it gives you a little pep of energy um you know without you know going to uh caffeine or something like that so spearmint or peppermint works uh really good it just kind of clears your mind your nasal passages and and just gives you a little little boost so it's always good when you're djing to have that um you know my mat <laughs> my uh anti-fatigue mat is probably the most important thing that i bring to save my knees and my ankles during a long night so yeah and as far as foam, I've never thought about doing foam, but I have been to uh, when uh, my wife and I were vacationing in the DR a few years ago uh, at the resort. They had a big um, foam night, you know, by the pool and uh, most of it ended up in the pool, you know, so people were in the pool and, you know, just, you know, foam all over them and they were almost drowning. But uh, but it was pretty cool. It was fun. It was, uh, you know, it was interesting, but I, I don't know if I would. Um, you know, purchase or, or do, do a system that, um, that does that. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's just seemed to me a little more than I, you know, I, I'd rather concentrate if somebody else wanted to do, uh, do that at my event, that's great. You know, it'd be a, another vendor p potentially, but, um, I'd rather not have to concentrate on that. I'd rather just concentrate on DJ. And that's why one of the reasons I don't do a photo booth. So I just, just do DJ and, uh, keep it simple and, and, and uh, but yeah, they're fun. <laughs> Phone parties are fun if you're uh, if if you don't have to clean up afterwards. <laughs> I, I know one of the things that uh, Chris said before, and we're talking about it. He will not do something within uh, basically like a thousand feet of water, um, far as like a stream or lake, because it can uh, affect aquatic life, and he does not want to do that. But uh, a pool uh, that might be a little. Uh, it could ruin your, your filters. You know, you yeah. really want to replace that that water. Uh, surfactants is what the, the foam material is made of. So um, it's that what makes your toothpaste frothy. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want that in your pool too much. But uh, yeah, I mean, in the Dominican Republic probably or... has a, a a lot fewer regulations and, uh, you know, rules to live by than we do here in the States. Yeah. Well, the, the other thing is that if you add some mint to it, you got a mint, fresh minty pool. There you That's go. Right. Oh. <laughs> Bubble gum a bath in it and brush your teeth. Yummy. Bubble gum. Yeah, people are drinking the foam. You don't want that. Uh, <laughs> don't want Jeff, that. Jeff, question for you. What is yep. your mint of choice? Is it Altoids My, or is it something else? Lifesavers? Um, no, there are um, – I forgot the name of them now. I've got a little – it's a little round um, container, and I forgot what they are now. So I'll, I, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> Icebreakers. 
Icebreakers? Yes, I think it is icebreakers. I think it is. Yeah, it, I believe that's. I believe that's what I use. I'll, I can go back and look at my my gig log real quick, and because uh, <laughs> they're sitting right up on top of my DJ booth, uh, so I will. I will go. I will, I will look here, and I'll tell you in like thirty seconds. <laughs> I, go on with uh, your question. I love Eltoids. Eltoids. Um, they're just ungodly strong, and you want to talk about open up your nostrils? They will. They will open up your nostrils easily, uh, but Eltoids, I, that's that's probably my favorite. And then um, uh, I'd probably say Lifesavers, the 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 peppermint Lifesavers. Yeah. They have a good, they have a good hit too. Uh, what about you, Hunter? What 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 was your mint of choice? Well, oh, lately I've really liked the Bucky's Cotton Candy Mints. Okay, you're going. You're like there's a, there's a Bucky's by you. Well, in Florence, I also go to like St. Augustine and uh, Daytona. That's where I can find some of the cotton candy mints. There you go. And that that's the thing is a Bucky's is not everywhere, unfortunately. I always, I wanted to go to a Bucky's. Tracy's been to a Bucky's down in Texas. And they they have some pretty good mints. Yeah, they have pretty good mints. Yeah, they, they have a, I, they I have can like, confirm they are icebreakers. Thank you. They are icebreakers. There you go. Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I like icebreakers. I like the icebreaker sours. Okay, Dwayne. What about you? What's your, what's your mint of choice? You're muted. You're muted. The lifesavers. Lifesavers. Yep. A anybody here? Tic Tacs. Tic Tacs. I was gonna say oh, that. Tic Tacs. Tic -tac. Tic -tac. Yeah, I like. Been that. a while, but yeah. Tic Tacs. I you got you. You know, you open that little part up, and you just dump a whole bunch of your mouth, and you got you yeah. know. I always liked, not the mint. The mint was always cool, but I always liked the orange. Oh yeah, yes. that was right here. And then Classic. <laughs> the wintergreen wint. I don't know if they still have or not because it's been a while since I've seen Tic Tacs. Uh Tropical. Okay. Yes. It's been a while since I've seen that. It, it's like, you know, uh, you tropical. see certain things, it's like uh gum. I don't chew gum, uh, one because of dental work, and two, because I'm not sure of smacking like a cow, but like I would love to bring that for them to bring back for gum wise is from Hubba Bubba. The strawberry banana gum. It was strawberry on the outside, banana in the center. It was red and uh, yellow. I'd love yeah. to bring that. But regular ordinary bubble gum, you know, if I was going to chew gum, that would do. But mint wise, yeah, it, it's it's always fun because and having mints is not a bad thing because you are talking to people. And if you had like Hunter, a few coffees from Dunkin' Donuts, or if you had. Uh, like Kevin, uh, I guess some uh, some beers, you know. Uh, Kevin's over to talk about alcohol for his, uh, <laughs> and then Kevin. Oh God, Kevin, Ke Ke Kevin. I love Kevin. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Kevin a, a hug when I see him because I I love him. Um, he uh, said a knife for cake cutting. He asked, got a question. No, not a knife for cake cutting. Cake cutting other things. I do have in our van, and this is one of the things we do have. I. I and I bought from Amazon. I have it on the van, and we've used it, and I gave it to the couple, a cake cutting set. So it has the knife. It has the the the, the little triangle server. It has a couple forks in it. Got off of Amazon, dirt cheap. It's not the most expensive thing. But sometimes you run into facilities don't have that. So we keep one on the van, and we run into a couple doesn't have one. They forgot to get it. The facility doesn't have anything. We grab that and give that to them. Say, here you go. This is, you know, a gift from us to you. And I, I want to say they're not expensive. I want to say like less than twenty dollars. Last time I, I got yeah. one, um, but we keep one on the van at all times because things happen. And that's that's one of the things. You know, I, I have a, I have a full size sprinter, and I have shelves on that shelf. We have some stuff on there that are once in a while things. But having that little cake cutting set, I, again, Amazon cheap. Give it to a couple. Hey, it's yours. Um, and then he said, Domino's Thin is the best. Oh, man. Poor Kevin. He, Kevin also puts mayonnaise in hot dogs. So it's like, uh, oh. oh. Hunter's no. like, yeah. And Chris is like me. Like, oh. No. <laughs> but Hunter, would you put coleslaw on a hot dog? Mm, yeah, at Sam's Corner, yeah. Slaw and dog, of course, okay. Okay. Yeah, I do yeah. ketchup, mustard, chili, and slaw. Okay. Jeff, what about you? Slaw or hot dog? 
No, I am just a uh, chili and mustard kind of guy. Simple. There we go. Is, is there the only two ingredients I'll put on my hot dog? There you go. What, what about you, uh, Dwayne? Uh, not um, coleslaw. I have ate um, the regular, you know, ketchup and mustard and the um, chili dog. That kind of okay. stuff. Chris, yeah. what about you? Classic American dog ketchup. Spicy brown mustard, relish, and raw onion. Oh, oh God. You, you know, in, here in Chicago, we have a, a rule. Uh, it's a uh, NC-17, and that uh, that means no ketchup over 17. So uh, ketchup on hot dogs, you go to a hot dog stand, uh, they kind of look at you and like, hmm, what? So, uh, yeah, that's one of the things you kind of don't get. A true Chicago dog is going to be – Mustard, yellow mustard, relish, onions. It's bright green relish because it's special dye they use. They like bright green, sweet relish. Um, onions, tomato, spore peppers, celery salt, a poppy seed bun with a beef hot dog. That is the key thing there. Uh, that is the Chicago way of doing things. Now, again, people do things differently. Yes, I don't like onions. I will never get onions on a hot dog. That's just, you know, me. I'm not saying what Chris eats or what cool thing he eats or what Jeff eats or Dwayne eats or what Kevin eats is good or bad. I just, you know, we just want to make fun, you know, make fun and joke around with each other. Uh, I put baked beans on too. That I've done before, you know, hot, uh, you know, beans and wieners, you know, hot dogs with beans. I have no problem with that. Usually the wieners are in the beans. But again, if you if you take if you take a hot dog and you put some beans on top, I have a problem with that. I've done that. But you know, relish, you know, mustard, yeah, okay. Um, you know, that was actually one of my favorite things to eat when I was a kid. The canned beanie weenies, those little small yeah, weenies. those were good. good. I still like them. I still yeah, trade still buy them for me. Throw in the microwave, get some nice <laughs> crust of bread. The little cheap little hot dogs, yeah, it's like they're tasty. <laughs> They're just tasty. Well, I don't even microwave them. I just put vinegar on them and eat them raw. I mean, it's it's, it's just cold beanie weenie, man. It's good stuff. <laughs> they're, they're, hey, <laughs> you like it. You know, you got to think about people in the military. They, you know, before MREs were the, uh, you know, K rations and the C rations, uh, they were, you know, basically beanie weenies and stuff like that in cans. And there's someone, uh, you know, in the military who uh, always who loved that maple cake, huh? Oof, that maple cake was good. <laughs> people who were served you know they they ate out cans they ate it was wherever the temperature was that's what they ate. they can't bust out an oven and, and cook everything so I believe um, the spaghetti was chef boyardee <laughs> <laughs> hey you know what not to sound bad i'm sure a lot of those guys in the military that's good eating for them you know i'm, I'm glad that you know uh our uh soldiers sailors marines airmen um that they're all protected and that they uh, hopefully have uh, some nice hot chow somewhere and, and relax. And hopefully they get home. They, they enjoy what they enjoy back at home for, for dinner. And um, I want to thank them all for serving and protecting our country. Uh, one other quick thing also, besides talking about hot dogs and all the fun stuff, you know, eating, uh, has anyone here ever uh, for bringing with them to a gig? Uh, again, like for, I brought, I, I have in the van, a, um, a server set for uh, for weddings, uh, but does anyone else with them bring a um, a blanket? Always in my trunk. Okay, yeah. Well, but anyone else? We bring a bring a blanket. Nope, I just bring an extra jacket or um, hoodie. We have a blanket in the van. Uh, well, Tracy a lot of times covers it with it. She falls asleep on the way when I'm driving home. Because I like the van cool, and I usually keep the temperature at sixty-eight degrees in the van, uh, especially in the summertime. I like it cool. I, I don't like warm, <laughs> but even in the winter time, she gets cold. Um, and again, I keep the van kind of sixty-eight, so she'll put the blanket on, and then fifteen twenty minutes tr me driving, she'll fall asleep and then back and be knocked out cold. So that's always. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's one other thing. Also, I have on my van and in my vehicle uh, blankets. Also, for northern climate personnel and people, are a good thing to have in case something should happen. Your vehicle breaks down, and you're trapped in the snow. 
you want to protect yourself and keep yourself warm and a blanket is a good thing to have. Um, Kevin says, uh, uh, thanks, bud, for saying I'm young with the <laughs> NC thing. <laughs> uh, uh, again, uh, anyone under uh, 17 uh, should have ketchup on their hot dog. So I, I guess, uh, Kevin, you're young at heart, you know. And uh, DJ Fire is coming in here last minute or so. Um, gotta love that. And got a question for you, uh, Nathan. Uh, when you go to a gig, do you bring what do you bring with you for yourself? What I mean by that, do you bring water? Do you bring any snacks? Do you bring breath mints? Do you bring Tylenol and Advil? Do you bring uh, a sewing kit? What What do you bring for yourself or just in case? Tide pen, anything like that? Uh, all, all of the above. So. <laughs> um... No, um, I always keep ibuprofen with me because sometimes I get splitting headaches and just, you know, random headaches pop up. But um, I, I've normally got this half gallon jug thing and I'll either fill it up with tea or pop or water <laughs> or something and bring it with me. So I've got something to drink while I'm there. Um it just depends. Most time I will eat, like if it's like my homecoming dance I just did, um, I just stopped and ate before I got there. I mean, I had cookies and stuff that they had, but um, yeah, I, I ate before I got there. Uh, weddings, I mean, I'll generally eat before I get there, but, you know, the bride and groom are always like, you know, you can go get some food. It's It's okay. So, but... Yeah, it just it just depends on the deal. Um, I guess I never really bought a blanket or anything in case of a vehicle problem. Um, uh, well, I always keep a uh, like one of those jumper packs with me in the vehicle. I guess I actually got one. I need to finish the review on. I've had it for about two months, and I just never finished the review. Um, but uh, I carry extra cables, you know, in case something happens. I need to start carrying extra speakers because of a gig that I did last weekend, which I didn't film anything because it was just uh, me playing music and doing announcements, nothing special for a uh, fall festival. Um, I had one of my speakers quit. Actually, one of the speakers that I just bought off you, buddy, has quit. What happened? Uh, let's just say the little horn tweeter thing went completely out. Really? Yep. Wow. So luckily I have replacements sitting around, so it has been fixed, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if you've ever had those speakers apart before, but I can see why they're so cheap. That little tiny tweeter in there was, I mean, super small. I was like, no wonder the dang thing freaking quit. There is different. It, it didn't stuff. blow. It didn't blow or anything. It just quit working. Diaphragm, you know, so. diaphragm overworked. It, it happens, you know, unfortunately. And again, look for that. Those speakers I've had for a while. Um, really never used them as mains. Always used them as secondary or uh, speakers around for remote use. So they were never used as mains. They're always used as... <laughs> Uh, secondary speaker well, they, cocktail. They have they have been fixed and they were actually upgraded with uh, thousand watt ones. I think the ones that were in it were maybe 250, 300 watt ones. So they've they've been upgraded. Both of them. I went ahead and upgraded the other one too. So I had some spares laying around. And they threaded right into the horns. So I was like, all right, well, we're just going to upgrade these. So well, there you go. Um, Hot rodding. I, I've actually speakers. been looking around. I don't know those of you DJs. I've been told for outdoor events, I need to run dual, either 12s or dual 15 setups. I don't know if you guys have ever ran any dual speaker setups. And if you do, what's your thoughts on them? Do you like duals? Would you rather have singles? No, you uh, always want to run singles. And you, if you run duals, you run them at a distance and you run with a delay. Or what you run into, you run into comb filtering and you run the phasing. Those are the two big things. I see you guys do that all the time. And that is a wrong way of doing things. <laughs> Certain ways you do it, 
Uh, if you're going to start running multiple speakers, you run arrays because they're designed in a way that the comb filtering effect is very minimal and you're stacking and you're creating an array of sound versus taking two 15-inch speakers, putting them next to each other. You create uh, peaks and valleys of power and you actually create a comb effect. So the sound comes out 90 degrees each. They meet each other in the middle and they start basically drop in db because you're canceling signal you're actually canceling each other signal out so if you have distance between them you have 20 30 feet you have side fill or back fill then there's a uh there you can look online there's a mathematical equation to give delay to those speakers so if you're in the middle of the room you don't sound like you know okay this sound speakers uh earlier than this i'm you need to get delay so that's the other right. thing you as well but if that still does that still, even on an out like an outdoor event it'll still do the same thing as outdoor event you run two speakers and if you got a large amount of people then you start doing arrays you start flying speakers you run arrays and if you want to do more bass then you either do one or two things you couple the subwoofers together bring the two subwoofers in the middle put them in the middle you can do color uh color right uh, i can't say it right you take one, if you're running four subwoofers, you take one, you take uh, two of the subwoofers, you point backwards, and you, you you reduce phasing, and you actually increase your dB. When you couple subwoofers together, two subwoofers you bring together, you increase dB. When you do uh, Keller, I can't say it right, when you turn two speakers around and put two speakers on top, you actually cre increase dB that way as well. And then when you do subwoofers, you double the amount. So you go from two to four, four to eight, eight to 16. That gives you more sound. If you just take you know, five, six, six subwoofers, you're not adding more sound. You're just adding more speakers, and it doesn't do anything. The, the level well, I've of noticed even on like the more expensive subwoofers, like it seems like there's more bass that comes out the backside of the speaker, you know, where the amplifier is, than there is coming out the front. What you're getting is reverb bass off the back of the cabinet. And what that is, it's not clear bass. In front, you should have clear, clean bass. Behind you, you'll still get bass coming out of it, but it's muddled and it's kind of slightly distorted because that's not your front where you're firing. Where you're front firing. Oh, okay. But when you do when you come along and take two subs and reverse them, you're you're actually adding, you're you're eliminating phasing going backwards. And that bounce back is going to give a more heavier hit. So it's right. ways of doing things. Um, but yeah, I, I would never recommend the best thing to do. Um, if you, if you have a question, there's a video on disc jockey news, um, 10 mistakes that, uh, mobile DJs do with sound. I would definitely recommend watching that. It is, gives you a lot of information on that. And the person to talk to if at, at NFL X uh, pro up in Minnesota, uh, ben Stoll, he knows his stuff about sound. He can walk you through all that for how to hang speakers, what you need. You tell him how many people you're having. He can walk you through and tell exactly what you need to have to have good sound. And that's the thing you have right. to understand. You want good sound. But I see a lot of pictures of guys putting 212s or 215s. They have four speakers across the front, and they have like six subwoofers, and they have all the sound. And what they're actually doing is they're creating peaks and valleys in the audio waves and are actually creating comb filtering and actually drop in DB. They're dropping sound. They're actually causing sound to be muddled and they're causing, you know, again, peaks and valleys. So you walk across the front, the sound will go up and down, up and down, up and down because you have canceling frequencies. Well, I'm, I'm going to probably buy some column arrays or line arrays or something uh, in the off season. So that I've got some different speakers and maybe try to just switch from regular speakers to Column or line array, I haven't decided which yet, but that's that's my next move. Is line to, arrays or line you know. arrays work better inside? And again, you can get some big, like you get the DBs, I can easily do uh, 300 people, no problem with those speakers. But you have to know what you're doing with SPL <laughs> and what you're doing. If you're going to do a lot of outdoor events where you want a lot of throw, those are going to be two-way cabinets. Now, if you really have a big outdoor event, five, 600 people, then you're going to do arrays. You're going to hang and fly arrays. And you're going to have special subwoofers for that. And that right there right. is one of the things that the uh, the sound couple uh, does a lot is they have line they have arrays and they fly speakers 
and they do a lot of that with bands. So that's one of the things that they'll be back on here soon. You can ask them those kind of questions too. But um, sounds good. We we we're out of time now. We ran out of time for the show. Um, here's one of the things, uh, <laughs> uh, Jeff. You're talking about you got your Chick Fil A or uh, late. Uh, Kevin says he brings food containers to uh, take uh, home food uh, if it presents itself. So he brings uh, he brings Tupperware or plastic containers to uh, grab food and. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> a, p- a piece of cake. Yeah, sometimes people are like, oh, I have extra cake. You want some extra cake? Okay, flowers. Yeah, we we've, we've done flowers plenty of times because we're usually throwing flowers out there at the night. Um, but cake once in a while. But other food, we we try not to, especially some of the distance we have to travel. Um, Saturday, we're an hour and twenty minutes away. I don't want to bring food at you know at eleven o'clock at night bring the food home it's it's way past it's uh shelf life and it's you know you're asking for it to get sick with that uh, unless stuff is refrigerated and taken care of with temperatures oh, doggy yeah, bags. It. yep it's got to be below 4 degrees or above 140 degrees that is your 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 that's your safe zones are above 140 below 40 here's your safe zones for food temperatures and time too anything more than 2 hours uh at holding temperature uh is basically to be uh, disposed of um, and that's, that's some food safety right there. Food safety one oh one. other than that, hopefully you guys enjoyed yourself again. Thank you so much for having coming in tonight and having everyone here. I want to thank uh, Jeff for coming in and DJ fire coming in here. Um, at always, uh, everyone else on the table, Chris, thank you for coming by to D- DJ round table. I, I've got to have you back on here again, brother. It's always fun. Uh, we, we got, when he says we got to talk about computer stuff and not, uh, not what brand to get, but just share computer stuff to help our computers work better with whatever software we're using. Uh, since, uh, I know you've built plenty of computers and you've worked both with Apple as well as PC computers, and you know, both operating systems very well. So with that said, I promise Hunter he's going to take us out. So Hunter, do it for me, man. Thank you all. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of the DJ Roundtable. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe on the channel, on the YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Good night, everyone.